In decades past, buying a comic book would give you a complete story. But nowadays, the story just continues on, issue after issue after issue. We'll take a look back at some comics from different time periods, different companies, different writers, and see, are these comics any good? Can you read them out of context? Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Comic Books Out of Context. Today we're going to be reading a comic book to see if it makes sense reading it on its own. Because you know it used to be, you bought a comic book, you got a complete story. Sometimes more than one. But nowadays certain writers just want to keep going on and on and on and on telling these big epic stories which are cool. But the problem is you buy a comic, you spend your money, they're now more expensive than ever. You read the entire thing and you don't really feel satisfied because you're not getting a complete story. So what I have here is a stack of comic books. And these are a bunch of random books that I have bought from different stores across the United States <laughs> over the last few months, uh, buying from conventions and stores and out of the dollar bins and out of the you know random unassorted boxes. And I'm just gonna you know shuffle them up, mix them up here. We are gonna pick one at random. We are gonna read it today and we're gonna see if it makes sense to read it without having read any of the ones that come before it. And is it satisfying? Does it make a complete reading experience? So. We are just going to flip. We're going to cut right here in the middle and we are going to read. What is this? The ferret number six. We are going to read ferret number six and we are going to see is this a comic book that you can read out of context? Okay. Just finished reading Ferret number six, and it's a pretty easy read. Most of it blows by pretty quickly because most of it's a fight. Um, the story opens with Ferret, and he's tumbling through some interdimensional portal. And at first, your thought is, well, how did he get there? Why is he there? This doesn't make any sense. And the first thing the book does is give you a recap. It explains what happened recently. So that was great. Um, the type of thing a book needs when you're jumping right into the middle of a story is giving you a recap. That's one of the things that I keep talking about in doing a series like this. So. It was nice to see that we get that type of thing here. Um, the problem is that as the story goes and he keeps flipping back and forth and, and different story elements are happening, it will give you recaps of certain things so that you can kind of follow along, but by the time the story ends, it doesn't actually end. We don't get any sort of clear uh, resolution to the end of the story. So. Uh, basically, he had gone into some alternate dimension um, when he was in the middle of fighting some villain. This villain was trying to destroy uh, a fellow protector known as Amazing Man. Um, Ferret was able to stop him, but then he got sucked into this alternate reality. Um, in this alternate reality, there was some princess and she was under attack and he was going to uh, help protect the princess, uh, but then the wibbly wobbly whatever stuff happened and he found himself uh, back into the normal dimension and he's fighting the villain again and so now the villain is trying to get to amazing man uh, to kill him for whatever reason now we don't know why he wants to destroy amazing man and we don't really know who amazing man is we just know that he's another uh, protector uh, from the team that the ferret is also on so we we at least know that they have a connection, but we don't really understand what's going on with this villain. Um, he and Ferret fight for a while, but there's some sort of countdown clock, and this villain has to destroy Amazing Man within a certain amount of time, or um, he's going to blink back to this secret headquarters in the Himalayas um, and have to try again some other time after his armor recharges. Don't know why, none of that's explained. Um, but so I, I, the, sto the story is very convoluted. There's a lot of stuff going on here. They, they fight back and forth. And then 
Um, the ferret gets pulled away once again into this other dimension. He's um, back in the castle with this princess, except now the princess uh, has been murdered and there's this savage beast warrior guy. And so ferret um, goes to attack him. Um, but uh, he gets sucked back into normal reality, finds himself in Los Angeles, which is away from the protectors and everybody else. And then there's someone waiting for him there. There's a subplot with this other lady that she was saved by the protectors, but it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't do anything else in the story. I guess what I'm getting at with, and I'm taking the long way getting there, you know, trying to explain some of the other stuff in the story to let you know that there is stuff that happens but none of it really seems to to get to any type of finishing resolution for any of these characters for anything that's happening unlike say um the green hornet um issue that i reviewed recently if you go back and read that one you can see that there's an ongoing arc in the storyline the storyline continues on even though it doesn't resolve itself in that issue there is stuff that does resolve in that issue um so that stuff gets gets taken care of and you can go okay well at least i got some sort of resolution to these particular story beats within this issue within this particular issue of ferret nothing like nothing really gets resolved um he is able to stop the bad guy and the bad guy loses time and blinks back to the himalayas and there he has to face against the bad guy overlord who sent him um and the bad guy overlord is um he's like it's a good thing you didn't accomplish your mission um and now you will only serve me which doesn't make any sense i don't understand like why wouldn't you want him to go kill the good guy and again it doesn't make sense and none of that's explained um and, and when we get to the end it goes right into this crossover so with, with subplots that don't go anywhere with the other dimensional stuff that doesn't resolve itself with the the this bad guy stuff doesn't get resolved like none of this really wraps up in any sort of way and none of it feels good enough to make you want to come back um i guess the idea they're hoping they're hoping that you read you know this is part of the malibu line so there was protectors there was ex mutants there was ferret there was man of war there was gravestone uh, i'm trying to think what else uh, there, there were a ton of these books back in back in this era um and, and they i guess they were really hoping that you know having these things be serialized like this would make you want to come back and you're reading all of them so everything ties together and um you'll want to you know see how everything works but really the problem is with nothing getting resolved in an issue like this if this is the first one i pick up i pick this up and i read it and then when i'm done eh, because nothing plays out so i don't have any sort of sense of i care about whether or not anything's gonna get taken care of in the next issue because i have nothing that plays out in this one um so this is actually another failure um ferret number six can you read this comic book out of context no no this is just not good it's not fun uh it's not that entertaining to read it like this and uh i would not go out of my way to find ferret number seven so there you go that's gonna do it for me guys thanks for watching i'll see you next time speed demon